I'm supposed to be grilling right now, but I can't handle grilling and not trying our new gas lines. Today, we're going to be running a gas line from my house to my gas grill and griddle. Now, a couple things that you have to know right away is you know, what type of gas are you gonna actually be using? Because if you are using natural gas, which a lot of you probably are, this is not the only thing you're gonna need. You're also going to need a conversion kit now, if you are lucky like me and you already have propane as your system, then you don't have to do any conversion on your grill or griddle. You can just go ahead and connect it. Coming up out of the ground right here, we've got 10 PSI coming from our propane tank. So that's right here. Once it comes up through our regulator, it's gonna be reduced up here to 12 inches of water column, which is the standard pressure for propane. And uh, if you have natural gas, it's gonna be closer to seven inches. Also the energy density of uh, propane versus natural gas is different. There's more energy in a cubic foot of propane than there is in a cubic foot of natural gas. That's why it's extremely important that you use a conversion kit when you hook up your gas grill to natural gas versus propane. A super funny story about that is we were visiting uh, my sister and brother-in-law and he had a new grill that he had just gotten from some random guy and he threw a propane tank in there and uh, fired it up and he's like man this thing burns so incredibly hot like he had to like turn it all the way down and then he even had to close the propane bottle a little bit and I'm like, <laughs> dude, I'm pretty sure that that thing was converted to natural gas and we looked at it and sure enough, it had been converted to natural gas. So an orifice for natural gas is gonna have a bigger hole than on propane, it's gonna be smaller and more restrictive uh, for those two different reasons, energy density and the pressure that the system operates at. Be aware that sometimes you might have a regulator that is set at two PSI. And the reason for that is you can push more BTUs through a smaller line. So in some situations, you might have an HVAC company that will have set this to two PSI instead of running it at uh, 12 inches of water column, in which case you will need a, an additional regulator to reduce the pressure from two PSI down to 12 inches of water column. The way you can check whether or not you have uh, a two PSI system is to look at your appliances, your gas appliances in the house. If they have an additional regulator, a small like silver colored regulator typically, uh, it's most likely going to be a two PSI system. If there are no other regulators in the house on any of the gas system, then you should be good to go and it's gonna be a 12 inch uh, setup. So just keep that in mind. Same thing applies to natural gas. Uh, you can have two PSI systems or seven inches of water column. So just be aware of that uh, when you're connecting it. In most cases, you're probably gonna have seven inches or 12 inches. Note that putting your regulator underneath a deck like this is not optimal and it may not even be to code. We're gonna start right here by spinning this out of the T and then we're gonna drop it down below these joists and then we'll strap it up to the joist making sure that we don't have the uh, black iron pipe touching the joist directly. I don't wanna rely on these quick connect fittings. Technically they do shut off when you disconnect them but I always want to have a valve shut off in addition to that if I'm not using it. So it's worth the investment to buy those valves. Links will be in the description to the valve, the kits, the fittings. So same thing right here. We've got T, a valve, another connection point, and down here we'll have a valve and the final connection point. If you need an excuse to pick up some Knipex wrenches, uh, today is the day. This is the PTFE thread sealant you'll wanna use, and then you also wanna pick up some leak detector. When we're all done, we're gonna paint it all. We'll go ahead and shut off our gas come into the house and then we can go ahead and take this cap off of here. Double wrenching is extremely important so that you don't put excess pressure on anything that's behind where you're working on. This is a little tiny bit of gas there. It's amazing how low of a pressure 12 inches of water column is. It's like less than a quarter of a PSI if I remember correct. We we are gonna build a drip leg into our assembly here. And for those of you who aren't familiar, before every gas appliance, you're supposed to have a drip leg to allow any like moisture or debris or oil or whatever to go down into that leg instead of flowing into the appliance. Now we're not gonna do it for all three of those uh, connection points to our grill and griddle, but we'll just put one right here. So it's gonna go something like this, but we just assemble it one fitting at a time Pipe dope is all you need. You don't need to use both pipe dope and thread tape. 
I always prefer the dope over the tape though in gas applications. It's pretty rare to see a professional that uses tape for gas connections. And I don't really know why that is. Comment down below if you think you know why that is. I could put a union in here, but I'm not really all that concerned about needing to disassemble this. But anytime you wanna be able to disassemble black iron at a later date, you really should consider putting in a, a union because otherwise you have to take apart your gas line all the way from the very beginning. As you can see, I put a union in right there for that very reason. Again, we'll get double wrenched here. Always nice when you can tighten more than one fitting at a time. As far as how tight to go, like uh, if your wife can still turn it, it probably isn't tight enough yet. That's pretty tight. I think that we're gonna quit right there. Now you wanna make sure you don't tighten it too far because you can't back it out. You can only tighten it forward. So right now it's a little bit under rotated, which gives us the ability to tweak it that last little bit when we're ready. All right, we've got a microphone up close and personal so you can hear the sound of pipe dope being applied. Another thing you can do is to uh, go back to the fittings that have already been tightened and take off the excess pipe dope and apply it to the next fitting. Because there's really no point in having a lot of excess sitting there, but you want a little bit extra while you're connecting it because you want it to be fully uh, filling every one of your gaps in between those threads. Now, since we are pulling against a very long piece of black iron, I know that this piece going into the house is like, I don't know, 10 feet long. Uh, I probably don't actually need to double wrench it. And so it's something you, have to, you can kind of be aware of. Like if I'm turning this fitting down here, is it going to be putting a lot of strain on the, on any particular component that we're concerned about? And if we're just talking about it being this long piece of pipe going back, uh, I'm not really concerned about that at all. So I'm not even gonna bother double wrenching it this time. I might when it gets a little bit tighter. It moved the regulator a little bit right there, so I think I am gonna go ahead and double wrench now. All right, again, we're gonna just slightly under rotate it, so it's almost all the way there, but it's not quite all the way there. Up next comes our five foot section of pipe, which is gonna span over to our manifolds. Now there are other types of gas lines that you can use, uh, but outdoors, Black iron is really the way to go. It's going to be resilient to getting hit by something. Uh, it just It's just a really tough gas line. But corrugated stainless steel, like I know you cannot use that outside uh, the way that it comes in, the, in its yellow color because it is not UV resistant. That jacket is not. Let's see, is it going to start for us? The answer is not quite. Copper is another popular gas line material, uh, and that can be used outside. But again, it's just not quite as resilient as black iron is. A lot of home centers will cut the black iron for you to the exact length that you want. So if you need a piece that's five foot long, like what we're using right now, you can get that pretty easily at most home centers. Okay, I think we got it started. Yep. get it as tight as you think your wife wouldn't be able to turn. But technically you could stop a lot before this and it would probably would be sealed just fine. But I don't like it when black iron fittings easily move. I want the next guy who takes them apart to have a really tough time. I'm gonna go ahead and take some black tape and wrap it around our pipe in all the places where it would come in contact with our treated lumber. We're going to use PVC straps for this. This is a great opportunity to use the pliers wrench because it's not going to mar up this nice brass fitting. 
I am using it backwards and I am aware of that, but in order to get a hold of it properly, it's working a lot better than like this. Well, let's see. Let's see if this works just the same. If it does, then I should definitely do it this way. Nope. So I need to use it this way. I don't know, guys, should I go one more? <clears throat> I'll go one more. It's not quite wife tight. A little bit more. If it doesn't look crooked, it must not be, right? First one's done. This is a nice spot to connect underneath. It'll be really easy to reach. It also won't be sticking so far out over here that it's gonna get knocked. We can just roll up our excess hose up under here. It's, um, quite happy with that. I actually got all these wrenches out earlier so that we could make a video about comparing the Knipex versus the channel lock. So if you guys want to see that, that will be linked at the end of this video. We'll use the channel locks just for fun on this one. These channel locks are actually no joke. They actually bite in to the pipe and the fittings very well. Very similar to the Knipex Cobras. And they're quite a bit cheaper than the Knipex Cobras, too. Back to the Knipex. That is ideal. Oh man, and I rotated it to the exact spot, too. I did not over rotate it, but man, that was close. That is perfect. What a beautiful day. It's like perfectly still right now. And for like the last week, it's been like ultra windy every single day. So I'm really enjoying this a lot. Not to mention I'm doing something awesome that I've been wanting to do for many years. The sad thing is, I don't know if you guys know this yet or not, but we might be moving next summer. <sighs> Which I've been working on this place like ever since 2011, since Naomi and I got married. Actually, before then, quite a while before then, actually. So there's a lot of sentimental value, sweat equity. I mean, this house, the raccoons were living in it when we started working on it. Yeah, it's been a long process, and we we saved up and bought it debt-free, Dave Ramsey style, which was a lot of work, and a lot of people think that we were stupid for doing that. I realize that most people choose to do do their finances differently than that and I respect that but we just do our best to keep working hard serving other people that's like this YouTube channel my whole goal with it is just to help people help you do your project and that's it it's pretty good First connection, second connection, and then I decided to go ahead and put a T in right here. We're just gonna put a plug in there actually for now because I'm not anticipating connecting anything at the moment. And then we extended another five feet back this way and we're gonna put our last uh, one right here. That's gonna get us closer to that edge over there, which I anticipate my deep fryer. Actually, that operation to happen somewhere right in here. I'm turning the valves like this because the handle is hollow inside and water could potentially sit in there and freeze and damage the handle. So I think it's just going to be better for the valve to be uh, horizontal like this. It's still easy to turn. It's just going to be a better, better situation. Here's our plug. We are ready to turn our gas back on. What we're gonna do is actually pop our line on right here and just go ahead and bleed it out quick. So we'll connect this right like so. 
this valve is off, so we're gonna go ahead and turn the gas on. Here we go. Gas is on. Here we go. Okay, that's, that's definitely propane now. <laughs> Let's test our quick connect fitting. Oh yeah. Nothing coming out of there whatsoever. In order to leak check, we're just gonna take our dauber and our soap solution and rub this stuff all over every fitting that we did. And then we'll come back in a few minutes and inspect it to make sure that there's no bubbles. It'll be pretty dramatic and obvious if you do have a leak. We'll go around and just visually inspect, make sure there are no bubbles accumulating. And if that's the case, then we're gonna be good to go on our initial run of the gas line here. I'm not gonna do it right this second, but what we're gonna do is clean all the pipe off really good and then go ahead and spray it all down with a little bit of paint just to give it a little bit of extra corrosion protection. I'm supposed to be grilling right now, but I can't handle grilling and not trying our new gas lines. Now what we got to do is just take this flare fitting off right here. Now our hose just so happens to come with the exact fitting that we need. Snug it up. Okay, pop this off. Pop this in. Now the gas was already on right there. Checked everything for leaks earlier, it should be good. All right, this is it, moment of truth. Get the utensils out. I hear noise. Here we go. Oh boy. It's working. This is an emergency this morning. Uh, I have got a friend visiting that's holding the camera right now, and uh, we have to make uh, pancakes for like 10 kids. Do you have five? Yeah. Yeah, 10 kids. We're gonna get a hold of the manifold itself, and then we'll get a hold of our other fitting. And that's all it takes. With flare fittings, it's kind of nice because they don't gradually tighten, they just tighten right at the very end. So once you get it cracked loose, you're gonna be good to go. Now we'll take our adapter fitting. And it is the right threads and everything. You could run into a situation where you have a uniquely designed grill or something where you might have to run to the hardware store for some different pieces. Always start your fittings by hand. If you start them with wrenches, you're gonna have a much higher chance of cross-threading them. So again, we're gonna double wrench it. We're gonna put our first wrench up here on the manifold so that we don't twist that. And then we'll put our second wrench down here. I know that I'm facing in the wrong direction, but the cool thing about the pliers wrench is that you can kind of get away with that. <clears throat> with flare fittings, you don't need to use any sealant, which is really nice. You, all you have to do is just get a hold of them and get them good and snug, and you're good to go. We could uh, soap this as well the same way we did with the black iron. I might do that in a bit. And our valve's already on. Let's see if it works. So the kids are currently starving to death while we get this hooked up. But thankfully it's only like eight in the morning, but they claim that they're starving pretty much from the moment their eyes open. Oh yeah, there's gas coming. So we Wow, this is gonna be great. All right, well, thanks for watching. Talk to you guys in the next video. Thanks to Andrew for holding the camera. You can subscribe to his channel, it doesn't exist, but I'll link it if he starts one. Do <laughs> <laughs> you have any words of wisdom? Um, <clears throat> breakfast is the most important meal of the day. Eat it or you die. <laughs> or don't. And I don't think it's actually true You should true, probably though. eat it. It's not the most important meal of the day. I think you should. I think you can skip it and it's fine. You, you probably live. I think coffee for, for breakfast is a good plan. That's the most important meal of the day too. Oh, look at that. Oh, that's that's a fire hazard. Oh, no, it's fine. Just <laughs> stir up that burner, it'll burn right off. <laughs>